So of course, since we have four of the five Aether Currents obtained, logically we have to go after the Chain Quest first. So, let's go ahead and speak with Wasanpe, who will be giving us our chain quest here in Sheshnawaisi Springs. Let's talk to him to take on our next quest entitled, A Bad Case of the Blue Devils. Aw oh, man, are we gonna have to deal with Mike Sheshevsky? Wasanpe of Sheshnawaisi Springs is short one porter. Hey you traveler, you came down the Tuliolol Trail, right? Have to see a woman on the road? Maybe nursing a limp, sore head, or some such? I'm afraid I have not. No sign, huh? I work here at the refinery, and it seems I now have a problem. It's a friend of mine, Kayamene. She set out for Tuliolo not long back by her own Hironi Hironi return, pulling an empty wagon. Was thinking the animal just got spooked by something. Sent Kayamene rolling into the dust and hot headed back here. But if you didn't see her, Say, you couldn't go in and take another look, could you? I'd go myself, but I'm two hands down as it is. Alright. Thanks, friend. She was taking a cargo of Cerulean to the Tuliolol Trailhead. You know the way, right? Just take the road southeast in town. She'll be somewhere along it. If you find her, tell her to get her high back here as quick as she can. We've got work to do! Yeah, I imagine she does. I imagine it has something to do with the train that we're dealing with. Yeah, let's go find this girl. Oh, I still got my T1 in tow. Yeah, don't have to travel all the way to the entrance to Shaolani for this one, thankfully. So, where is our person of interest? Right over here. Let's go ahead and speak with her. And help her out a little. Ah, finally! You don't know how good it is to see a friendly face! Yeah, can I ask if you're alright? Well, Sampe sent you. Cause he's gonna talk my pay, isn't he? Well, at least the Ronique and the wagon made it back. A good thing it all happened after I dropped off the Cerulean too. Don't want to think how much the company would charge me if I lost the load. Maybe that's what the beast was after. Oh, I didn't tell you about the beast, did I? I was just out from the trailhead when it sprang up on us out of nowhere. Naturally, my Ronique bolted. Managed to hold on this far, but I eventually lost my grip and took a dirt bath. Still, it could have been worse. At least I didn't break anything. It wasn't that you found me, not the beast. Speaking of, you didn't see it on your way down, did you? A horrible blue blobby thing? Blue blob? Yeah, maybe if we look around, we'll find it. How about right over there? Let's zoom on in. Yeah, that looks like a blue blob. Just like that! Oh, God, it's the beast! He found me! Uh, well, it doesn't seem like he's on the attack. At least not yet. He was a lot more aggressive down by the trailhead, I swear. Why isn't it attacking? Maybe it got weaker or something? Yeah, it's running away. I guess it took one look at you and lost its appetite. Or maybe there's another reason. Thanks, partner. I've lived here my whole life and never seen anything like that blue blob before. But others have. I heard about them from my fellow tappers. Like ruling with skin, they said. Started showing their ugly faces a few years back prowling around by the wells. They reported it to the foreman, but they weren't interested. 
the way they consider it, so long as we still got all of our limbs attached, the bobs aren't a threat. But they damn well better change their minds about them now. If it's not enough that one of their best employees could have been killed, they could have lost a wagon load of ceruleum. Say, Lathia, would you come back to the company offices with me? They can't wave it away so easily if the both of us are telling the same story. Okay. Thank you kindly. Come on then. Let's head on back to Shishin and Wesley Springs. And let's make our way back there. We'll use the history tab to get back. Alright. Yeah, thankfully it's not that far to get to Kaimini. Home at last! For a moment there, I didn't ever think I'd see this old place again. And I can tell you right now, I'm not taking another wagon out until the company tells me exactly what they're going to do with to protect their precious employees from those rotten blobs. Are you with me? I certainly am. So we'll take our 403,000 experience points, 829 gil, plus our last Aether Current here in Shaolani. Now with that, I have full attunement after I spent time after the stream last night picking up all the remaining Aether Currents. So now we can fly anywhere, which will make things fly a lot faster. So let's go ahead and speak with Kayamani again to take on our next quest entitled Down in the Mouth. Kayamani is eager to impress the danger posed by the blue blobs upon company management. Alright, so here's the plan. We go to my foreman, Wasanepe, the one who sent you to look for me. We tell him everything we know about the blue blob, how it ambushed my wagon, and try to start us to get me in its gullet. And how the mere sight of a formidable warrior like you sent it running for the hills. With sanpei has got the ear of the overseer, you see. So long as we can convince him, the company's sure to do something. Assign us an escort, at least. I'll head over to the officers and drag Wa Senpei from his desk. Come and join us as soon as you can. Yeah, and she means it, too. Alright, let's go. What happens when we arrive? Ah, oh, Traveler. Thanks for finding Kayamani and bringing her back safe. She said you and her had something you wanted to talk to me about? Indeed we did. Whenever you're ready. That's right! I was on my way back from the Tuli Yolo Trailhead when I was sent upon by a thrice damned demon. If it hadn't been for Mathia here, I'd be drowning in that devilish Shannon's belly right now. So yeah, let's explain to you what we saw. <laughs> Damn. So yeah, what's here to this? And you say Mathia saw this blue blob too? He did, and he's not the only one. Plenty of the other tappers have seen them too, prowling around by the whales in the wagons. Even some of the engineers servicing the rigs. You see the connection, don't you? They're nosing around anything and anyone that smells of ceruleum. Maybe they're attracted to it. Maybe that's why they were attracted to me! Maybe. If they are, and they're aggressive like you say, then they're a threat to our workers we can't ignore. Still, there's something about all this that doesn't hold water. Which is what? Because I need to get water. Mm. My thoughts certainly pick the convenient time to dry out. I've heard of these things too, the blue blobs. Been keeping track of the sightings, even made a map of them. And you know what I've found? Most of the sightings have been around Shaolanis Station. Not a single one near the mob of Sanchea. Oh my. You know them all, right? The pits of Ceruleum near the rigs. The ones that are always catching light. It's the sunlight that sets them off, you know. They burn themselves out occasionally, but the next clear day that comes around, they'll all flame again. 
What I'm saying is, that whole place stinks of Cerulean. So how come there's never been a site in there, even with all the wagons taking the trail straight through it? And how come the one that followed you there took off as soon as it drew near? Yeah, maybe it's something about the maw that wars them away, or who knows what an animal like that is thinking, or it took one look at me and knew that it had met its match, but is it something about the location? That's what I was thinking. Thought it might be the fire, but they don't seem to mind it around the rigs. No, there's gotta be something else. And so, Kayamene, I want you to look into this. Go back to the mall and see if you can figure out what might be keeping them away. You grew up around these parts, right? Perhaps the folk in your old stomping grounds might know something we don't and be more inclined to share it with one of their own than an outsider. I'll handle all of your porter and duties until you get back. You know what the Overseer's like, keeps his purse strings tight. Unless we can prove these things really are attracted to Cerulean, and the attack on you wasn't just a freak coincidence, he's never gonna stump up the guild to guard every convoy. Or maybe we can just get away, find a way to get rid of the third altogether? Understood. I'll get you all the proof you need, I promise. Would you mind going with her? Don't worry, I'm not my boss. I can spare you an escort fee. The Blobs might not like the mall very much, but they seem to have taken a liking to her. Okay. Thank you kindly, and take care out there. Thanks for the wordplay, too. Come on, then, Mathiah. Back to the mall. Alright, let's do this. And now we can fly! Yeah, sadly I cannot fly high enough to where the ships are. Just in case you're wondering. Alright, here's Kayamene, and here's what she was talking about. Yeah, this isn't Valley Gramanda. This isn't his work. Do you know? I think this is the closest I've ever been to one of these pits. My grandma always told me never to go near the bar. She said that if I burn myself to a crisp, I'd have only myself to blame. But duty calls. I have a look around this pit. You take one across the way. It's just under the rig. As for what we're looking for, well, I suppose we'll know when we find it. Alright, let's go check it out then. Yeah, we're just going right into the pit itself. Yeah, we're showing how brave we are by going into an area filled with an explosive device. You find a pale, softly glowing crystal at the bottom of the sodium pool. Return to Kayamene to share your find. Yeah, what will she say about this? Let's talk to her and find out. Here's what we discovered. A crystal, you say? At the bottom of the pool? I found one too! Stunned my toe on the wretched thing. Guess my Grammy was right. Jumping in the mall is dangerous. <laughs> I thought it was just a rock, albeit a funny colored one. Don't think I'd ever seen a stone as wide as this before. Not around these parts anyway, and certainly not two of them. It's as almost that they've been put here deliberately. Here. You don't think these crystals might be what's keeping the blue blobs away, do you? It could be possible. So we'll take our 403,000 experience points and 915 gil. Okay, let's go ahead and speak with Kai Mani again to take on our next quest entitled Listen to Your Elders. Kai Mani wants to know more about the strange white crystals you sorry that you found in the Maw of Sanshea. Looks like these stones are the only clue we have to go on. Let's go and ask my grandma if she knows anything about them. Nishtazi is her name. She lives over in Luwatanyawasa, the village where I grew up. It's just on the other side of the pew. Come on! You know, we've actually been there before. In fact... Whoa, the... 
All of a sudden, whoa, that's a lot of side quests that just randomly sp just spawned up. Okay, I didn't think it was that many. I was thinking it was just gonna be the stuff in and around Sheshnawazi, but my goodness. But we, of course, there was also those other two around the train station. Nishtesi isn't actually my grandmother, you know. She's one of the village elders who takes their duties more seriously than most. She's always out and about, keeping an eye on everyone, whether they like it or not. Let's split up and try to find her. You take the right side of the main street, I'll take the left. Okay then, right side it is. Just look for the gate? We can. To find this constant gardener. Oh, Mom Ashtesi? Sure, I've seen her in a long since. One of the village kids was playing around in the fields and she didn't take too kind of to it. Chased him up that street there. Said she was gonna give him the lie hiding of his life for damaging the crops. Oh boy. Yeah, the, not at all threatening. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, here's the breathless boy that he was talking about. Hey, you. Sorry, my ears are still ringing from the chewing out Grammy gave me. I thought I could outrun her, but she was too fast. If you're looking for her, she said she had to call on one of the ladies in the village. Only thing stopping her dragging me home by my hair. The lady's sister lives just up the hill there. She'll be able to show you which house it is. Yeah, we're definitely chasing quite a few people around this place. Yeah, there's a kindly lady over here who we speak to next. You're looking for Nashtesi? She went to see my sister. She's the child, you see. Grammy made a charm for a safe birth and wanted to give it to her in person. The house is just back around the corner under the butte. Alright. Alright, and so this is Nashtesi. Hello there, madam. Hmm. Who are you? What do you want? Well, I can't be half of someone that you know very well. Ah, you found her. Accident work, Matthias. Friend of Kaya Manis, are you? And I see she's got you running errands for her as usual. Whatever you want, make it quick. I got places to be. We wanted to ask you about these stones. We found them in the Mall of Sashenya and thought you might know something about them. Here. Fool of a girl! <laughs> yeah, apparently we've done bad. It's one of the Warren stones that keeps the base from coming back! And you just picked it out and brought it here? Are you reckless or just plain stupid? I didn't mean anything by it, I just want to know what it was. Then shut your mouth and open your ears while I tell you the tale of the blue beast. Time was it stalked these lands, a demon of burning blue flame that would rise up from the maw on a moonless night to wreak fiery death all across Shaolani. Only when its thirst for destruction was finally sated would have fade to nothing. He has what he pan over. But its evil spirit lived on, welling up from the underworld and taking the shape of its minions, the devil's droplets that would throw themselves into the fiery pits to summon up their master once more. Our ancestors knew that whenever those thrice things appeared, it was only a matter of time before the blue beast rose again, until a young miner from the village made a discovery that would change our fate forever. He found a strange pale ore in Yawakwa Canyon that seemed to drive the droplets away. A stone in each pit, and that was the last that we ever saw the beast. And yet... Thought it was the last we would ever see of it. But then you decided to get it into your stupid head to go panning about at a pool of hellfire and run away with the only thing that was keeping us safe! You go and put those stones back where you found them this instance, and I'll think about sparing you the lash. So 
So yeah. How do we make it so these things never need to be used? God's my poor heart. If they were so important, she could have told me about them before. Yeah. Crucial information is very important. Well, better than anything ever, I suppose. After hearing all that, are you think what I'm thinking? That the devil's droplets and the blue blobs are one and the same, or... Yeah, just what we need to keep them away. They have to be. And the stones we've found must be the same ones the miner threw in the pits to keep them away. Well, we were just told that now. We only started seeing the blue blobs a few years back, right around when the ceruleum drilling business took off. Maybe that's what summoned them up from underground. The sound of the drills stirring their master from his slumber. They need to throw themselves in burning ceruleum to summon their master, but with the stones keeping them away from the maw, they're searching for it elsewhere. That explains why we're seeing them around the whales and the plants. They're following the scent of ceruleum like we thought, and as soon as they find a blue flame, like the flare stacks on top of the rigs, or the tools of the engineer's service in the processing plant, they'll summon up their evil master once more. They'll summon up their master once more! We need to get these souls back in the pits and fast! Yeah, you're damn right we do. So we'll take our 403,000 experience points and 1,001 gil first. And so, with a hint of urgency, let's go ahead and speak with Kayamene to take on our next quest to complete this chain entitled Back in Blue. Kayamene has a stone in her hand and a cloud on her brow. First things first, we need to get these crystals back to them all as quick as we can. Right now, there's nothing stopping the blobs from jumping into those pits and bringing back their master. Oh, I'm such a fool! Grandma always told me I have to be stupid to go anywhere near the mall of Sanshea, and she was right. If anyone gets hurt, it'll be all my fault. We have to hurry. Indeed we must. <laughs> go, young lady, go. Yeah, back to from whence we came. Past one of, oh, she's going right to a smokestack. To find. Uh, I thought we came back just in time. I found a saw pad being attacked by three of those things, but they ran off as soon as I arrived. Must have been the stone in my pocket. They're getting bold of fire. We need to do our way with them before they can hurt anyone else. You go after them. I'll get my saw pad back to the springs. Right, let's go. Yeah, it's right over here. Oh, get my chocobo, it's reload on a guy saw green. Alright, let's go. We take on three Solural Weums. Clever. For those of you who are wondering, I've actually um, upgraded my tank gear using the chest that we've been getting over the course of the quest. So my, I'm trying to get level 96 gear on my tank. Yeah, we just breezed through this chain quest. It was over and done with in a hurry. Let's fly back on over and see what these two have to say. You got him? Oh, thank you, Mathiah. Were the crystals back where they belong, though? And you're doing all right there, Wasampe. Yes, thank you. Both of you. You saved my life. I was done with Kayamane's delivery, so I thought I'd look around the mall myself. See if I could find what was keeping the blue blobs away. Turned out the answer was... Nothing. I fought them off as best I could, but it was three against one. If it weren't for you, I'd be a dead man. You're wrong. The only reason that they attacked you is because of us. Because of me. 
Yeah, let us explain the discovery that we unwittingly made. That irritated an entire town. So that's how it is. Old stones and old magic. Yes, the stones were the only thing keeping them from the pits. I'm sorry. You weren't to know, but now we do. The question is, what are we going to do about it? We know that the blobs are attracted to burning cerulean and we know they're dangerous. But we also know that they won't go anywhere near the kind of stone Suma fire, fire found in the pits. That, to me, adds up to a plan, providing we can get our hands on more of them. Grandma said the stones are mine from Yomaqua Canyon. If there are any more in there, we can take them out and place them in around town as a burying of the blobs. Alright, you head down to the canyon and see what we can find. I'll keep covering your deliveries till you get back. Luck be with you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, it looks like you both have work to do. Next stop, the canyon. If we can find a scene of this stuff, we can finally keep our people safe. Speaking of, I hope you don't mind coming with me again. I'm a tapper, not a fighter, and there's a lot of open desert between here and there. And I guess even though we're getting food, we're not finished yet, even though this is quest number four of the chain. So we'll take our 403,000 experience points, 829 gil, plus two servings of Tacos Al Pastor for tanks. So yeah, normally it's four quests that are involved with the chain quest, but in this instance, it's actually five, so... Let's see this through and speak with Kaya Mani again to take on our next quest, which will actually be the combination quest for the two chains entitled Dig for Victory. Kaya Mani asks for your continued assistance in finding a way to counter the Blue Blob's Bane. Ah, there you are. Are you ready to go? Yowekwa Canyon's to the south of town near Luatenya Nina Wawasa. Remember, we're looking for more of that stone that we found in the swooning pits. Understood? Alright then, let's head out. That indeed. Off we go. Yeah, it's actually not far from the... Yeah, so this is the canyon, so we were... I've gone through here before. Fly on over and then we'll zoom down. Although I think that there is a way into the top, which there is. Yeah, you know we can't get through here by walking, so we're just flying in. Weave our way through the S curves. And get to the entrance. The worn stones were a lot paler and more crystalline than the rest of the rock around here. Let's split up again. Give me a shot to find anything that looks like the stuff we found in the pits. Alright, here we go. Let's start looking around. An interestingly shaped stone among the pile catches your attention, but alas, there is nothing pale nor shiny about it. Here we got luck in three spots, all told. Thankfully, the bats aren't bothering us. We do see a rock seam over here. Sandstone wall is made up of layers of a hundred hues. Red ochre and gold, alas, none is quite of the same shade as the warding stone. And then we have over here some bleached bones. Although bones are quite white already. You 
pull one of the bones from the sand and a chunk breaks off. A surprisingly heavy, surprisingly crystalline chunk whose resemblance to the stone you found in the Mall of Sashenya is unmistakable. Looks like we found what we needed. Kaimane? No use. I've looked and looked, but all I can see is sand. Well, that and sand stone. Did you have any better luck? I might have something. This is it! The same stuff as the warning stone! Where did you find it? Under a fossil. A bone, you say? I remember Grandma telling me something like that. She said that when an animal dies in the desert, and its bones are swallowed by the sand, they take on the aspect of the earth below, gradually turn into stone. But if it's a great beast, a powerful beast, it's the earth that takes on the animal's aspect instead, and the sands around it become imbued with its ether. That must be why the blue blobs stay away from the moss sand share. They can yet sense the beast whose bones once once were, and they're afraid of it. Yeah, that definitely got the Moogle going. But if we want to keep all of our operations safe, we're going to need a lot more stones like this, and that's going to take a lot of digging. If the overseer's not willing to pay for a few guards, I doubt he'd give us the guild to open up a whole new dig site. Yeah, if it's skill you need, I <laughs> I know someone who might be able to lend you to it, or don't look at me, I'm a fighter, not a financier. But yeah, let's explain to her someone who we met in a previous chain quest. You do? Friends in high places, eh? Suppose you make a lot of them in your line of business, helping folk out as you do. Anyone I know? Well, do you know this particular person? The tick with the money lender? I know him if only by my reputation, but what a reputation it is! Let's head on over to Husatawi and ask for help, and ask him if he can help. Yeah, I'm having a hard time getting it all out of my system this evening, it seems. So we make our way over here. Oh, he's, yeah, he's, he's inside. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, here he is. Well, Tha, it's so good to see you again. Can I buy you a drink? Well, actually... You prefer a mine? Well, the least I can do is hear you out after all you did for me. Your friend's downstairs, you say? Then what are we waiting for? Let's talk business. And I will jump over the railing and see you down there. Or are they outside? Yeah, looks like they are. Alright. So if I understand the situation correctly, Kayamene here needs to mine fossilized beast bones, but her management is too tight to foot the bill. Pretty much. Alright then, let's go and have a little talk with this overseer of yours. See if we can come to some arrangement. Really? You don't need to hear anything more? What more is there to hear? If Mathia vouches for you, that's good enough for me. I owe my debt and I mean to pay it. Besides, this proposal of yours sounds like it could be a benefit to the whole of the wilds. Thank you. In that case, let's head over to the springs right away. You too, Mathia. Okay. Back to the springs we go. Let's see what kind of arrangement can be obtained. Just in time, with some has gone to fetch the overseer. He'll be out in a moment. So yeah, here comes Usampe, and so yeah, here's the overseer, I guess. Who else was expecting a Lalafell, given that they're very adamant on running mines and all that, and getting all the money out of them. 
Mr. Tazenza is his name. Sorry to keep you waiting, folks. I'm Talzenza, the man in charge of the Cerulean operations around these parts. I understand you have a proposition for me? Yes, sir, we do. It's about the beasts that have been prowling around the plants. And this is pretty important. So let's explain to you why it is. So sometime later... Are you sure these stones really do war the blue blobs away? How do we know this old legend you're basing everything on isn't just idle talk? They do, sir. I'm sure of it. Three of the things had me cornered so Kayamane showed up holding one of these stones. They were afraid, and not of her. There's no doubt in my mind that if we can mine more of this stuff and scatter around the suiting works, just like our ancestors did with the mall, we can keep the whole operation safe. If there's any operation left to keep safe, we're already in deep with the banks for the new rigs and the plant refit. Until production ramps up, where am I going to get the guild to open up a whole new dig site? Right over here. I believe that's where I come in. I'm sorry, you are... Zetekwa, money lender by trade working out of Husatawi. Your colleagues told me of the difficulties that they've been having with these blue blobs. While they've only been sighted around Sheshin Oasis Springs thus far, I'm a firm belief that they could soon pose a threat to all Shaolani. After all, if these creatures are attracted to the Santa Bruni Ceruleum, it's not only your wells that are in danger, the station too could soon find itself under attack. Indeed, I confirmed with one of my clients who works for the railroad that creatures fit in the description I gave them have been sighted along the tracks. So you see that I have a personal stake in this. I'll be more than willing to lend you whatever funds you need to put your colleagues' plan into action, and on terms that don't interfere with the daily running of your company, naturally. Lest you forget, two of your workers have already been attacked. If ensuring the survival of your company is your primary concern, as I agree it must be, I urge you to act now. Please, sir, I don't want to lose my life or my job. Yeah. Are we able to convince this man? How much do I pay you, Kaimani? It clearly isn't anywhere near enough. I asked you to drive your wagon for us, and you come up with a plan to save the whole Dane Wilds. In other words, we succeeded. Offer accepted. Let us get those bones out of the ground and keep our people safe. Huzzah! Thank you, sir. You won't regret this. Masampe, Kaimene, you're off portering duties. I'm putting you in charge of this project. Master Zatikwa, if you wouldn't mind stepping inside the office for a moment, we can discuss the terms of the loan. Alright. And thus the mission is accomplished. Looks like this is where we part ways. Fair enough for well, my th farewell for now, my friend. This may go some way to repaying the debt I owe you, but I still consider myself to be well in arrears. If there's ever anything else I can do for you, you know where to find me. And yeah, glad we could help you both out, and the company as a whole. Alright, Kaimani, the final word goes to you. I probably should join them, but before I do, I wanted to thank you again. If it weren't for you, none of this could have happened. There's still a lot of dangers out there in the wilds. Some we know about and a lot we don't. But bit by bit, we're overcoming the obstacles they throw before us. And with a little help from folk like you, I know that one day, we'll make this a place where people can not just survive, but thrive. Yes indeed, so we'll take our 403,000 experience points and 1,174 gil.